sadly though, even today, there is a gender divide in India's tech workforce. A similar disturbing aspect is a drop in the number of women in science, technology, engineering and math focused roles. India has favorable demographics to make tremendous progress in this era of the fourth industrial revolution, also known as the digital era. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and a very special good afternoon to all the young girls, the bright young minds who are torchbearers of the new India attending the event. It is a privilege for me to be addressing this event, for which I must thank the Department of Telecom, Government of India, the International Telecommunications Union, the Innovation Centre Delhi and other agencies of the United Nations who are hosting the Girls in ICT Day 2024. We are living in times of exponential changes. The world is changing, the world is innovating and if we are to survive in this fast changing world, we too must innovate. Already the way we work has changed and it will further change. So, for everyone present here today, be ready to embrace the change, be prepared to take up science and technology as career options because science and technology hold the key for the future. The majority of future jobs are going to be in those dreams. So break the shackles of tradition, challenge yourself and be the change makers. Dear friends, technology has become an integral part of our daily lives today. It is constantly reshaping the way we live, work and interact with the world. The rapid advancement of technology has triggered a digital revolution that permeates every facet of our society. From communications, education and healthcare to business and finance, the transformative power of technology is evident. STEM in general and ICT in particular are the drivers of this phenomenal progress in technology. As we move deeper into the fourth industrial revolution, the role of ICT becomes increasingly pivotal underpinning innovations in every sector and ensuring that our journey towards digital and technological advancements continues unabated and propel our nation forward. Sadly though, even today, there is a gender divide in India's tech workforce. According to NASCOM, only 36% of India's tech workforce are women. Blame it on age-old dogmas and societal stereotypes, such as women are best suited as teachers and jobs involving soft skills. A similar disturbing aspect is a drop in the number of women in science, technology, engineering and math focused roles. Data from the World Bank shows that women make up 43% of total STEM graduates in India, but account for only 14% of all scientists, engineers and technologists. India has favorable demographics to make tremendous progress in this era of the fourth industrial revolution, also known as the digital era, and emerge as a world leader. If we are to drive home the advantage of our demographics, both men and women should attain their fullest potential. A male-dominated STEM or ICT landscape where women are underrepresented will rob India of its opportunity to rule the roost. We have missed the first two industrial revolutions and we're merely playing catching up during the third. This era of the fourth industrial revolution has given us the opportunity to make amends. We must rise to the occasion, we must exert ourselves and we must excel. Otherwise, we run the risk of becoming irrelevant. So, for India to shine, more and more girls, the women of tomorrow must enter the realm of STEM and opt for technology as in career. Because if we are to build the India of our dreams, technology will be our driving force. And both men and women in science and technology must fire on all cylinders. Dear friends, in the ever evolving landscape of the tech industry, the underrepresentation of women in the workforce is a debilitating reality. The gender gap does not only signify gender bias, but it is also a hurdle in the path of innovation. Closing this divide is a strategic imperative, necessary for the industry as well as society's holistic growth. While women make up 36% of India's tech workforce, their presence drops drastically as one starts looking up the corporate hierarchy. For instance, only 7% of women held executive level positions. 
only 13% were working in director level roles and a mere 17% held mid managerial positions. Even the new age startup ecosystem is grappling with the problem of the dismal participation of women. Limited access to funding and resources for female led startups and businesses continues to contribute to the underrepresentation of women in leadership roles. It is indeed an unfortunate scenario because women are no less suited to be leaders and change makers than men. And yet a woman's climb to the top is invariably a lot more difficult than a man's rise. I personally believe that as leaders, women have an edge over men. Women have empathy and that automatically makes them better leaders. A woman leader as she climbs up the ladder will inevitably carry the team with her. I've heard my mother, Mrs. Neeta Ambani, a champion of women empowerment say time and again, empower a man and he will feed a family. Empower a woman and she will feed the entire village. I believe that what my mother says is true. Women are born leaders. Their innate selflessness makes them better leaders. So by denying leadership roles to women, we're denying ourselves the chance to realize our full potential. Of course, there are signs of changes all around the world. But let me tell you that the changes must be systemic. A token representation just to show diversity and inclusivity on paper will not make any difference. Women employees must be nurtured from early on in their careers. They need to be shown that their growth can play out in a company and how it will go a long way to help the company. Friends, to encourage increasing participation of women in STEM and ICT and to bridge the gender divide in our tech workforce across the hierarchy, we need to design and execute a comprehensive strategy. First, curriculum enhancement. Strengthening our STEM curricula to promote equal participation is crucial. We must consult gender equality experts to ensure our learning material are free of biases and resonate with both genders. The government, under the stewardship of our visionary Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi, is making alterations and necessary cost corrections, and the results are already showing. In the last decade, there's been a 6% increase in women's representation in the tech workforce. However, we still have a long way to go to make it a 50-50 man-woman ratio in every sphere of technology and across hierarchies. With the government doing its part, Industry too must chip in to catalyze the transformation. The tech firms too must play their part, devising ways and means to ensure that the career of no woman engineer gets stagnated. Every woman gets the chance, like their male counterparts, to bloom to their fullest. Dear friends, let us pledge to transform our societal frameworks and educational systems to be more inclusive. By empowering women through STEM and ICT, we can unlock untapped potential and inspire a new generation of women to lead in the era of the fourth industrial revolution. Let this conference mark the beginning of renewed efforts to ensure that every young woman has the opportunity to pursue her dreams in STEM and ICT. Equal contribution from our female population is essential to sustain our growth and compete on a global scale. By empowering women to participate fully in these critical fields, we're not only bridging the gender divide, but also enhancing the creative and innovative capacities that fuel development. Together, we can build a future where innovation is driven by diversity and where our daughters have equal opportunity to become the leaders of tomorrow.